The only people concerned with EV range are internal combustion engine vehicle owners. I heard this quote recently and it really stuck with me. Uh, getting used to your first EV takes some time, but being on my fifth or sixth one, I kind of lost track at this point. Once you're used to it, it's really easy to get accustomed to it. Uh, there's a lot that goes into an EV's range, especially looking at the EPA ratings, which is like the legal number that we see on Tesla or Lucid or Rivian's website. Um, there's, you have the weather conditions, so things like temperature, wind, rain, all of these things are factors that get taken into consideration. You also have driving speed. So if you drive like a grandma and you're on roads at 50 miles an hour, you're gonna get way over what the estimated range would be over driving 75 on the highway. Um, so there's a lot of variables that come into making up an EV's range, but the biggest thing and what it all boils down to for modern day EVs is charging. Because most cars, I'm not saying go out and buy a Fiat 500e with 149 miles, but most modern day EVs have over 250 miles. So even, even in the budget class, we're seeing new EVs come in at more affordable pricing. So I think the biggest thing is talking about charging. How long does it take to charge and specifically for home charging and road trips? If you don't believe me on how much EV range varies, go check out any, any car that you're interested in, look at their EPA stated range, and then go check that against Edmund's real, real world EV range test. You'll see all over the chart there, some, some hit their range estimate dead on, some go way over the range estimate, some go way under the range estimate, and it's the same test for all of the vehicles. Obviously they can't control weather conditions, but it just shows you how much little variables like weather, wind, sun, temperature make such a big difference in the overall range estimate in the real world.